Okay, well, this is kind of a preview of one of my future videos. It's my 1917 Walcott lathe made in Jackson, Michigan. Um, it's original paint. I built this uh, overhead gantry drive so I could still use the cone pulleys. Got a leather belt on it still. Who knows how old that is. It's a 16 by 64. Um, doesn't really have any damage anywhere. I think one of these castings has a a weld in it. I don't remember which one it is. But it's nothing. Um, it's got the tape attachment. All kinds of good stuff. Um, it's... I've got to change this piece. I have a replacement for it. i just got to change it. Someone welded the socket on there like an idiot. So, everything works. It, uh, it can cut 111 thread pitches with the standard gearing it's got. And uh, the optional gears are back down here in the storage compartment. Both gear sets and the letter gear off some other thing. But it's got four speed lead screw and separate lead and threading shaft and reverser in the apron, clutch drives, power cross feed. Um, like I say, you got four speeds of four speeds of uh, carriage. That's too small of a cut chuck on it, but that's okay. And uh, anyways, people, the reason I did this, people ask me more than once, many times actually, how come I don't clean these old machines up? How come they're covered in a thick layer of grunge? Every one of them. And I'll tell you why. In Michigan, every spring, when the frost heaves or leaves the ground, these machines get coated, completely coated with sweat. When that humidity changes on that drastic couple of weeks when the ground is thawing, the humidity just covers all these machines. Every one of them just gets covered in a thick layer excuse me, of grunge, of, of water. So what I do, every one of these machines gets completely covered in cheap spray oil three or four times a year. The dust out of the air, everything, everything lands on them. And there is just, like I said, a thick layer of grunge on every inch of this machine and all my machines and what that does even after it gets covered in sweat it evaporates and it don't rust if these machines weren't covered in that layer of grunge they would all be in the scrapyard 50 years ago whoever Every one of these machines is the same way. Whoever owned them knew the same thing I do. I'd love to have them all cleaned up and polished and looking like lab instruments. But it's just not possible. Not here in Michigan. Not without having them in a heated climate controlled storage. And that's a lot of money. Anyways, this will be coming up. It's a three horse, 220 single phase adapter I made out of an old, I made this, uh, this drive is the main drive out of an old, old drill press. It's still got the reverser in it. But the problem is that reverser is like seven to one. So if I engage that reverser, this lathe right now, that shaft runs about 275 RPM. 
if I engage that, you know, that shaft up there would be doing 1800 RPM or better. And this lathe would probably fly apart. Even though I've had it well over a thousand RPM before, just to see what it would do. It didn't make a drop of noise. It didn't get hot. But I'm just not comfortable spinning that old iron chuck any faster than about 400. Right now it's running about 265 RPM at the, at the chuck. And I can obviously go up. So anyways, you'll see a video of this here one of these days. See ya.